Welcome to the first part of our trip through the beautiful countries of Bolivia and Peru. We started off in Buenos Aires, where we had been spending the last two weeks and took a plane to La Paz. As the descent into the administrative capital of Bolivia is one of the most dangerous maneuvers in aviation, all flights transfer through Santa Cruz de la Sierra, where a more experienced pilot takes over the last part of the journey. The altitude hit us right when we exited the plane. Uh, La Paz is situated at an altitude of around 3,600 meters, making it the highest capital in the world. And although we had taken Diamox to adjust, our luggage felt so heavy that we were out of breath within seconds. But uh, we just rolled with it and laughed at ourselves, struggling with the famous short breath and the dizziness right from the go. And Actually, we started sterilizing some water right away as drinking was the number one remedy against the altitude sickness. Unfortunately, we only had one day to spend in La Paz, so we decided to go at it fully. We were strolling through the streets and just going with the flow of the atmosphere, um, and it had us already fall in love with this very unique place that has a little bit of uh, manana philosophy to it. The first thing that every visitor has to notice are these extraordinary Bolivian women that have a very unique style to them with their hats and their big skirts. Only later we learned that big is considered beautiful in Bolivia as it points to the fact that a woman is able to bear many children. So the women here stuff their skirts as much as they can. In all of the markets and shops lining the streets of La Paz, there were countless industrious women selling vegetables and their craft. It wasn't always easy to take pictures of them, as in the ancient indigenous belief, having your picture taken means that your soul is stolen by the photographer. So many older women yelled at us and threatened to throw things at us when we pulled out our cameras. All in all, the Bolivians are very superstitious and many stores, especially on the witches market, carry uh, alpaca embryos and religious and spiritual items that are very foreign to our western eyes to burn with them in a ceremony that is said to appease the gods. Not only in the ceremonies, but in everyday life, the Bolivians love to dance and have many traditions and festivals around their music and their dances. La Paz is an important cultural center of Latin America, and it hosts several landmarks belonging to the colonial times such as the San Francisco Church, the Metropolitan Cathedral, the Plaza Murillo, and many other places. The flags of Bolivia didn't always look like they do today. This version was modified in 1826 when Congress changed the colors to yellow, red, green. Red represents the blood lost during the battles for independence. Yellow represents the country's great mineral richness and green represents its territory and the lush vegetation. In 2009, Bolivia's current president, Evo Morales, who is the first indigenous president of Bolivia, established the so-called Wipala as a second flag with Bolivia's new constitution that is to be flown to the left of the red, yellow, green national flag in all public areas. 
It's a symbol of the Andean people of Western Bolivia, which actually creates some tension in the country, as most people in Eastern Bolivia and other regions do not consider it a symbol that represents their culture, so they refuse to fly it in many places. Bolivia has a history very rich in exploitation and division, and that still lives on today. La Paz is also home to both the longest and the highest urban cable car network in the world. In May 2015, it was officially recognized for that as one of the new seven city wonders. It connects all the different parts in the city and is a great way of exploring and just seeing the scenery from above. Another tourist hotspot is the Valle de la Luna, or Moon Valley, which is situated about 10 kilometers from downtown La Paz. It consists of an area where erosion has worn away the majority of the mountain, leaving tall spires that make for some great pictures. So we spent some time there, but as it didn't have the solitude of other national parks, we felt it was slightly overrated as an attraction in La Paz. The beauty of the city is really best enjoyed from one of the many viewpoints throughout the city where you have a view on the surrounding mountains and can see how the city kind of just melts in with its natural surroundings. Um, so that was probably the best day to end our way for sunset. We had a fantastic time in La Paz. Uh, we definitely already are planning on coming back at some point um, to learn more about its history and the people and uh, the many other things that we didn't have the chance to see this day. I very much hope that you enjoyed this little glimpse into our adventure in La Paz and I look forward to taking you along with us on our journey through Bolivia and Peru. See you soon and thanks for watching.